And jumping right into mayoral duties is Glyn Lewis uh, from Queenstown, and he's on the line now. Hey, good afternoon, Glyn. Thanks for giving us some time today. Not a problem, uh, Leanne. How are you? Yeah, fantastic, and congratulations. Uh, great result, and it, it was a really interesting weekend, wasn't it, overall? Yes, it was, but, um, yeah, I had a, had a bit of a celebration on Saturday with my team, so that was uh, really good just to... Um, Decompress really after four months of bit of hard work and um, mm. no, nah, it was really good. Big build up, and you know you were five hundred and seventy three votes clear of the second highest polling candidate, John Mitchell, uh, who who of course had a high profile. And Olivia, she campaigned pretty hard, you know. Uh, and Daniel, who's the he's the anti politics man, I suppose, isn't he? Uh, but still got one hundred and sixty six votes. <laughs> Daniel, he he, yeah. did, he has a funny he has an entertaining campaign, put it that way. Oh yes, yeah. No, he was. Um, he, <laughs> he was a good man, Daniel. Um, I only got to m- talk to him a couple of times, but yeah, uh, yeah part was in the right place. So. Uh, I think so. so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, some people so. would have resonated with that, but anyway, congratulations. Yeah. Hey, so where, when you finally, when you got the, um, when you got the word, where were you? I was at home so with my family around me, so that was right. really, really nice. Uh, I was trying to play it cool on the phone, so I couldn't give anything away to, to my family and my partner, so they were all staring at me when I hung up, and, yeah, and then I broke it to them. So <laughs> they were they were wrapped, obviously, a few tears from mum, so it was good. I'll bet, yeah. So, uh, you know, Sunday, I guess, is, is kind of take take stock and have a breath now, and are you are you pretty much into it today? Yeah, so I'm actually clearing my desk at my old work and running stuff in to set up my desk in uh, council chambers, talking with um, Mike, the chief executive, this afternoon. Yes. But been pretty much doing congratulation admin this morning and most of Sunday and trying to uh, get hold of all the councillors and uh, right. wish them the best and congratulations. So, yeah, a fair bit on. I'll say, you know, that's the thing. In terms of councillors, actually, I'm not... Uh, is there many new faces? Yes, yeah, seven out of the uh, 11. Uh, all oh, new. that is a lot so, then. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. So, but it's a uh, great mix. So really looking forward to actually getting that team together and seeing what we can do for this uh, district. Mm. Okay, so we all know that it's been a hell a couple of years and we all know, I guess, the big issues facing Queenstown, particularly the workforce shortage and, and all brought about by events beyond our control in many ways. But w- if there's one thing that stands out the most, Glenn, uh, in terms of needing uh, work on, what would it be in your opinion? Uh, that would be reconnecting with the community. Um, I think during COVID it obviously stopped especially the councillors and the mayor getting out and amongst the community members because obviously with all the mandates and the, and the um, lockdowns, we weren't really be able, we weren't able to hold meetings in a more personable um, and a commutative style, like even meetings ourselves, we were on Zoom and talking heads on a screen is not that conducive to working together well, is my view. So I'll be really encouraging our councillors to get in amongst the community and getting getting out and seeing seeing what this great district has to offer. They they most of them well, all of them do have their own perspective of and community backing, but it's great if they can actually go out and see other parts of this district. Mm. That's a good point because it's a big district. Yes, very big. So Macarora to Kingston and Glenorchy and Luggett. So we've got uh, I'll be putting a few miles in the car. Yeah. Out them all. That's right. So it's about being visible and about being united and and actually this face to face thing that's been missing. Yes. Um putting a human face on what sometimes can look like a pretty corporatized organization, but you but a lot of people have to understand that uh, the workers and the staff within council, they're all members of the community as well. And you see their hard work and their dedication to what they're trying to do or doing the best for what they see is their community as well. Um, putting that person, that personable face on that is one of the big things I'd like to really see happening since now that COVID's hopefully in the rear view mirror. Mm. Well, it seems to be 
Well, certainly on, on a bit of a decline at the moment, but a lot of work to do. What's your opinion on the situation in uh, in, in central Queenstown with all this uh, work that's taken place, you know, the infrastructure and the uh, street uh, improvements, etc.? You, are you personally disappointed that it, that it isn't all ready for summer? Oh, it's never a good time to do uh, that sort of work in in the C, in any CBD. Hi, the Beach Street stuff will be all hopefully finished by the end of this month. We've got a few openings um, happening at the end of this month, so that'll take a l- uh, bit of pressure off those Beach Street uh, businesses. Um, but, yeah, really looking forward to actually getting, getting some of that uh, work out of the way and uh, concentrate on, let's say, the uh, Frankton Road between uh, Frankton and Queenstown. That's the next uh, hurdle we've got to get through. But, uh, yeah, it'll be functional during uh, the summer break. Uh, I've been mm. told that will happen, so uh, we'll just have to make sure that that actually does happen. Mm. So will you, keep, will you keep pushing this one? I mean, you are a structural engineer, so you're perfectly positioned uh, for, for any projects like this. You know, you know what you're talking about. Yes, I started off as a server, so there's the civil stuff as well. So, yeah, it's it's more about the uh, transparency of how of what we're trying to do when we're going to finish stuff. Is um, I think there needs to be some certainty in the public arena about that, and actually holding holding those um, those dates uh, to account. And I think mm. that's probably not being communicated as clearly as it should and um, that's probably one of the things that will happen when uh, when um, I'm finally sworn in next week mm. and uh, you know are you what what sort of what's what uh, what floats your boat like what are you interested in as a guy because I guess you know with with Jim Bolt <laughs> he obviously was a bit of a daredevil he do skydives and uh, <laughs> and uh, love racing fast cars and things like that do you have a passion for anything that you can share with us at the moment Glenn um, well I was <laughs> I was in the military at the young age so Jumped out of perfectly serviceable aircraft and done all that thing. I got that out of my system when I was young. Yeah, I, sensible. You won't, you won't you won't see me jumping out of planes anymore. <laughs> um, Fair um, enough. I I well, I really enjoy uh, junior rugby coaching. I've been doing that for the last eight years here in uh, Queenstown. It's one of my great stress reliefs. So hopefully, I can keep that going. Um, I'd really like to continue doing that because it, it's not just having fun with the kids every two times a week and then the game on Saturday. It's actually the parents that uh, come along to the games on Saturday. They sort of keep you grounded and tell you yep. what's what's going well and what's not. So I certainly want to keep that one going. Yeah, well, I think I think that's uh, to be commended, and and it is it's good to be grounded, and and sports are great. Oh, I don't know, yeah. it's a it's a great uh, what's the word for it. Uh, unifier. Yes, yeah, that's true. And uh, it always brings a smile to your face when something you've worked on and then the, um, the young men as they are now, under 14s, um, do uh, execute it. To, <laughs> you've been trying to work on it for the last six months or whatever, <laughs> however long it's taken. But mm. bring it, let's the chest puff up a bit, but anyway. Yeah, oh no, good on you. And so, so, so no sort of bizarre or unusual hobbies that you can confess in, at the moment? Oh, if I did have them, would I confess them? Probably not. I'm a bit of a, obviously, being an engineer, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to books I read. They're usually non-fiction. Nice. But apart from that, uh, yeah, that's probably the only strange thing. Yeah, good. A whole lot. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, so Glenn, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the big issues, like um, uh, the proposed airport expansion. You had quite a bit to say on that. Uh, we're... we're, we're um, how much energy are you going to put into this subject in the next wee while? So, uh, we're talking about Queenstown? Yes. Queenstown, yep. mm. So, the air noise boundaries, they're locked in place for the next 10 years. Um, and what you're going to see from the airport is they've just released their strategic plan and then their master plan, which will either be coming out end of this year or early next. That will be to public consultation and you'll see how this airport will be uh, progressed mm. um, within those noise boundaries for the next 10 years. So um, at this point, uh the airport's got a fair bit of work to do to liaise with the public and then it'll come back to council 
hopefully, ooh, probably April, May next year when we start looking at the uh, SOI again. Mm. Okay. Ha- housing is a big issue facing us. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that now, uh, what, what you'd like to see happen in the next year or two? So one of the election campaign issues was the um, inclusionary zoning proposal that the previous council um, progressed, which I was a part of. So we'll see how that goes through the planning process. I'm uh, uh, very keen to see that progress through to allow some uh, of our uh, families and uh, residents that are on the waiting list with the Housing Trust to be able to get a secure home Mm. and actually have uh, security in uh, the place they want to live in. I think that takes a fair bit of stress out of um, out of one's life if you've you've got a place to stay, yeah, and it's secure. So that's a big focus. Obviously, um, it's a it's a national problem. It's not one Queenstown Lakes itself can tackle by itself. Mm. But uh, we'll still be encouraging central government to come along on this one. Mm. What, what, and and the visitor levy is always a hot topic, isn't it? You know, for funding yeah, so infrastructure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd like to see that progressed, and we reinitiated that uh, probably about two months ago, and so we're going to progress that one through and see see if we can uh, get that one happening. It's actually a key assumption of our funding uh, into the future, yeah. into the, the uh, 10-year plan, so it's critical because we uh, it provides that extra funding for infrastructure that both Wanaka and Queenstown need. So, um, yeah, very keen for that one to progress. Mm. Very good. What do you think, um, I won't keep you much longer, but what do you think about, um, uh, you know, the pre-COVID days in Queenstown when we had just uh, uh, probably way too many tourists to to really cope with in many ways, and a lot of people are keen to see uh, that controlled in some way into the future, particularly in terms of how it damages our environment, et cetera, et cetera, you know, the freedom camping issue. Are you kind of, is that something else that you're quite um, concerned with? Yeah, so COVID, this is probably one of the silver linings out of COVID because it allowed um, the industry itself to take a breath, Mm. even though they were doing it tough. And as I was a board member of Destination Queenstown, we started on a a destination management plan uh, with uh, Lake Wanaka Tourism, uh, Department of Conservation, uh, Kaitahu and uh, QLDC. So that's looking at a more regenerative tourism philosophy so where uh, tourism actually enhances the environment, tourists actually uh, give back, and the 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 trends now is that when a tourist does can't uh, come and visit, they they do want to actually participate in um, that's that, that sort of regenerative side of things. So I think there's a big opportunity there. It's in draft form. Now the plan, and it went out for public consultation, ooh, probably three, four weeks before, um, yeah, three to four weeks before the election. So mm. we'll probably see that come towards uh, come to council middle of next year because I think there's the big opportunity to actually refocus on what the ho- the uh, us the host community, so Queenstown and Wanaka want from tourism, and um, mm. then actually start promoting that and actually looking for tourists that share our values. I think you were right. The uh, the pre-COVID days of mass tourism, I do not think they're going to come back and we certainly don't want them back the mm. way they were. Mm. Okay, well I love I love how you campaigned on the fact that you, uh, you're you a listener, you know, so and and you want to, to lead the district and I think, uh, you know, well I guess that's why people voted for you but uh so you 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 were planning on being like an a, an open um, mayor? I mean, it can be very draining and demanding being there for the people all all the time. But uh, uh, sounds like that's what you're going to try to achieve. You know, actually to 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 hear people's concerns and act on them. Yeah, it's it's being open to all views, and I'm been upfront about that. I I'll take on all views. Obviously. Um, one vote and the councillors all have to exercise their votes. But we're there to make a decision, but we have to be open to all views and weigh up all those views when making a decision on. And uh, if we can do that, we're doing 
doing the best that we can for this district. Mm. And then, of course, you've got all the councillors with different viewpoints. So really, you've got a, you've got an interesting job, haven't you? Because you're there as a facilitator and a, and a figurehead, but also yeah. t- everyone's got has an opinion, and uh, and in the community too. And I think people are quite vocal in Queenstown. They like uh, having their say, you know. And I suppose. Uh, uh, you're you're no yeah, different, but, you know. Yeah, but that's the great thing about this district. Everyone, like they're very passionate about this area. So, you, you, if you if you look at it that way, it's actually quite invigorating. It, I, I don't see it weighing me down or weighing the councillors down. It's 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 actually a good, robust community that just they everyone just wants the best for this district. So, yeah, I, I don't see it as a an, an issue as uh, per se, I, I think it's just a good, healthy debate is um, what I'll encourage from my um, from the councillors. And you're right, I, I do have to guide them along, but mm. um, um, that's probably in the next two weeks. We'll probably all get together and um, I really want to hear what each councillor's aspirations are and hopefully I can um, allow those aspirations to breathe and to come to the forefront, each one individually, and then uh, work as a team to to get all that the, the stuff they want done done. Exactly. Oh, well, it's um, it's uh, it's really lovely to talk with you. Have you had a quick chat with Jim Bolt? Yes, uh, he, we talked on Saturday after I got the call from uh, the chief executive. Uh, right. He congratulated me. Um, he was probably more excited about going overseas. <laughs> you know, he's going on a holiday, a much-deserved holiday, I think. Yeah. So, no, um, big boots to fill, obviously, but I'll forge my own path, as, as one should. But, um, no, I was uh, very appreciative of his phone call on Saturday. Yeah, that's lovely, and uh, no, and I'm sure he he wishes you every success, and and so do we. And yeah, it's great to uh, great to have some new blood. And uh, as we move into, especially as we move into summer after what's been a tricky winter, hey, it's um it's feeling quite positive. I think at the moment, Glenn, do you, do you feel that as well? That that sort of uh, positive yeah. energy. Yeah, we've turned that leaf. Like I said, COVID hopefully is in the rearview mirror. Um, We've got some great opportunities. We've got some challenges ahead with um, government reform. Um, That's going to put a fair bit of stress on council staff and uh, the organisation. But as long as we're aware of it and we're agile enough to um, change tack, if the central government elections next year, if there's a change there, we're going to have to be agile enough to go with the political flow Mm. nationally as well so there's a, a lot coming up but we're, as long as we're aware of it and plan for it i'm sure we'll be fine i think so well uh it's a pleasure to talk to you and uh all the best for your very first day uh behind the desk behind the mayoral desk thank you Leanne. thanks, thanks. glenn uh, glenn lewis uh, our brand new queenstown mayor taking over from jim bolt who's winging his way to um to uh, exciting cities abroad, uh, good on him. And uh, yeah, it's cool to catch up with the new blood and uh, and uh, feel uh, certainly you can feel his energy, can't you, for for the job.